Pops in with the grand slam. Do something right now. Sonic Wave is there. It's getting low and low. Oh! Butterfly, they've stolen it. Mano forgot the barrel. We are back getting ready for game at number two of day two here on the LCO. Uh, the Chiefs, they're back in it, and we've got Mammoth as well to give them a second shot at the title because it kind of will feel like that, knowing that the Chiefs have this uh, high-caliber roster going into the matchup. Mammoth, there's there's been a whole lot of conversation going on Twitter about them as well, trying to figure out where they stand everywhere, what they are going to be able to bring to the table. And this is a very, very good test for them to see just how they stand up against a team like the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a, uh, a rough strength of schedule uh, for Mammoth, right? Kind of welcome to the league. You're up against Peace Day 1. Now you're taking on the Chiefs, right? And they kind of got humbled. Uh, putting it lightly, to be frank, right, yesterday. Yep. You drafted an Akali in the top lane that's running all uh, lanes, summoners to try and get ahead, absolutely bullied, not offered any support from his jungler, left on an island. Um, but the one thing I will say is I like the ease of execution, right? A lot of these teams, if you are coming in and you notice a bit of a skill disparity, you're not playing these crazy convoluted 1-3-1, one, one, split push, TPs and poke comps, and we need to sacrifice this to achieve that. It's a very clear cut. I hook, I, I kill kind of thing, right? Yeah. So um, I'd love to see them continue down that path and at least stick to an identity and say, let's note what week one looked like and by week nine, you know, see what we've uh, impressed. Well, let's start talking Chiefs first. So yesterday they started off on a zero to seven, uh, beginning up against order, but they had gold for days and their macro decision making was just absolutely insane. It kept them in the game the, the whole damn time and it made it look so easy going towards the deeper end of things because I believe this is the 40-minute match. But yeah. now, look, a team like Order struggling against a team like the Chiefs, like what can Mammoth do up against this team? And, you know, Chiefs, what is their uh, win condition here? Like, which way are they going to win it through today, Rusty? I mean, you don't really know. The, the beauty of this Chiefs team, right, is they are the team that I think we call the super team above all else. Yeah, so much caliber, so much tenure in competitive re uh, the regions behind them, in multiple regions as well, four of them having been exported from Oceania to other places and having since returned. They could win anywhere. That's the crazy thing, right? Like, because all of these players have been stars in their own right at different times. Yeah. Yesterday was a, it was a clean shutout through just pressure really and they already had the lead just because they knew how to play the map early it could be the same thing it could be literally anything they could play win lane win game it's just like yep. they knew every single thing that they needed to do now a team that is still working on that is mammoth so they are one of these rosters where they're bringing in uh, some newer talent they're bringing up some youngsters that are learning how to play up against the big dogs and today is probably going to be no difference given Absolutely won't be. Uh, I'm looking at Rocco once again. Love Let's the haircut. Rocco. I mean, it just inspires me. I see that with the face, and it's like, look, I'm going to play Nautilus. I'm going to hook you on repeat. You're going to you're gonna lose. Uh, look, I, I think, looking at Voice yesterday, he played a Samira. There were moments in that game where you're thinking, that's Samira. Give it a few more items. Give it a few more moments to pop off. Could be a bit of a problem, but we'll see as we go through these highlights. Uh, by the end of the game, the Galio J4 Wombo combo kind of fell off. People just having... Summoners available, maybe they could go down to as simply as tracking summoners better. Uh, but it was a case of you're all in on this one target, they flash out of that, and uh, the fight kind of breaks apart as a result. Maybe Peace bit off a bit more than they could chew, and a little disrespectful here. Appy jumping in 1v4, but as I repeat, you know, I'd love to see them <laughs> stick to you know, this level of personality here. Refury clearly uh, a character in his own right that could, fingers crossed, play some Vega. I need to point out that. Mammoth at least has some great personality in those player cams. A voice, I was watching him in particular, he was getting really, really into it. So you can tell like the comms are there, the chemistry is probably being worked on a little bit with this team. And there are, you know, shining moments that they can build on, you know, go and hit the hit the strat books, go and watch the demos back, and then eventually they mm. might get something working deeper on in the season. And look, I feel head to head though, it's gonna be it's just gonna be so difficult against the Chiefs. But look, we could be surprised. I'm always open to being surprised, right, Rusty? 
if there was one thing that I would say for Mammoth in a game like this, that, that they should be able to improve on from yesterday already, it's timing summoners and playing for summoners, right? Mm -hmm. The peace game, if you go for a Jarvan composition without a Camille, if they have flash, your combo is not going to work. So you need to understand how to skirmish before you team fight. And I think that was the biggest thing that was missing from Mammoth. Mm. Uh, I did have a brief conversation with the coaching staff of Mammoth as well. And they said skirmishing was one thing that they are working on. So I think it's pretty clear that we saw that weakness really exposed yesterday. Yeah. And that's what they should be working on again today. Ah, well, we'll see if that is going to be worked on through this game. But of course, we're going to bring Kitty back into the conversation. So, uh, Kitty, how are you doing? What did you do during your break? Well, I chugged some energy drink because oh, I need to stay well. hyped. But um, I've got Tally and Trom the Pom waiting on the side. So let's get into the interview. Hey, guys. Hey. Hello. So uh, starting off with Tally, you guys had a rough start against Order 07. What type of mental strategy did you guys use to bring it back? I wouldn't really say we had to like have a mindset to win that game. It was just like keeping cool, like knowing we we're going to outscale regardless. And the fact they weren't really like pressuring us and like keeping their like lead that they had. I think that it wasn't really so hard for us to win and more the fact that we just need to like play it cool and just like just win through our scaling. Yeah, you can't stress too hard about those or you make the wrong decisions, eh? So we can't talk about last night's game without bringing up the Corky carry. So what's making Corky so strong? The Luden's build or the first strike rune? Uh, I would just say it's like a mix of like the meta right now and the fact that Corky is such a like... Uh, he's like a mix of everything where he's like a, he's a strong scaling champ who also can like poke control like he, do, he does everything well He's extremely safe and like not many champs you can just blind pick like first and be able to carry a game So I think it's the fact that he's so versatile in like what he builds and what he can lane against and also be a carry Yeah, well, I'm excited to see more from the Chiefs later this split. So let's move on to Trom the Pom So welcome to the LCO. You've joined uh, Mammoth as a team when usually people join as an individual. How is the process like? Uh, well, we played an amateur for like a few months prior to joining it and a lot of the synergy does carry over but it's rather different versing professional teams rather than amateur because in amateur you, you just win by being better but it's not that easy now. We have to actually learn to play the game as properly as we can. Yeah, I mean, you guys can continue building on that team synergy the more you guys play, right? So uh, don't stress about that. And uh, the next question I have is, you guys are going up against a super team of the split. What preparations have you guys made? Uh, preparations? Well, we just... We're just gonna go for it, to be honest. Preparations-wise, it's like, we've come up with a draft that we think will work, and we're just gonna try our best to... Do something different. I mean, gotta spice things up, you know, maybe pull out a pocket pick, maybe the Tom Kench, we don't know. But uh, thank you for the interview from both of you. And that's the wrap for the, uh, for the interview. So let's head back to Mac. Thank you. I really love hearing that we're going to get a spicy draft. That's always got me ooh, <laughs> smiling, got me very excited for this game. Now, I uh, just need to point out as well, Tally, I uh, read some notes. He's smart, he's handsome, he scales. Uh, he actually has it all, doesn't he, Rest? Yeah, he even is the bionic man, if you ask him. Is there anything that Tally doesn't have, Mac? It's kind of exceptional. He's been in multiple roles as well. He single-handedly mm -hmm. took down the Chiefs in 2014. Winter regional qualifiers, game five is Riven. Jesus, that man does everything. I think the one thing he no <laughs> longer has is uh, Carbon's respect. You know, he's gone from legacy to the Chiefs. I mean, he's just... Oof, he's just cut ties. He's done unfathomable things. Hey, Carbon's still his boss though, right? Ah, uh, true. Ah, uh, true. Ah, uh, <laughs> true. Can't escape him. <laughs> Can't get rid of him. Now, uh, of course, we got to talk predictions as well. Let's do a reverse order. So, Kitty, tell me, who have you chosen for this matchup? So um, I chose the Chiefs in winning tonight's match because once again, uh, Chiefs has three uh, returning players, two from NA, one from Korea. They're all really strong players. I'm just expecting a very clean game from them. And if 
they don't have a clean game, then I'm just I will be pretty disappointed. But uh, obviously, Tr uh, Trom's team Mammoth is still learning, so mm. it's a it will be a good learning process for them. Now I need to point out that it is still early; it's still week one, but I'm already bored of having the same pick as everyone. So I'm already <laughs> already getting a bit of a bit of a shake in you my hand. Like I just got to type in the other team to what everyone else is typing in very soon, <laughs> just to keep like put some underdog picks in there. I don't know. I'm just. I'm, leaning, I'm going back to my Australian side. I just need to pick the underdog. So maybe we'll start feeling that one going into next week. But uh, look, I feel like we're all on the same sort of page with this one. It is the, yep. the super team versus the up-and-comers. So I am, I am glad to hear from Tron that they are going for something a little bit different because that is what can catch teams off. Like if you remember, yep. there's like that Shaco pick that we saw, <laughs> you know, in the first split of the LCO. Uh, along with the Amumu pick, mm -hmm. if, if you want to go the whole way back, but didn't quite work as expected, right, Rusty? Yeah, no, definitely getting a tattoo of Amumu uh, from from that Amumu pick. So has that you. happened yet? No, it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. I actually had an artist, and then we had lockdowns for like seven years. So yes, true. Don't true. have the artist because they're in a different state. We'll get there. It's I've got we've got the artist in by, we've got the design in by. That's where we're at. Maybe at the finals. Yeah, well, oh, it's in Melbourne. Yeah. Oh, very true. true. Very true. It's towards the end of the year, could happen. I know that they're, Melbourne is just sort of like an artsy area in general, and they've probably got some good tattoo artists. So we could tee that up. We could tee that up. Now, uh, what I need to ask is let's let's take some let's take some stabs. What do we think this crazy draft is? Hmm. May Farn's going to lock in Talon or Rengar. Just do something absolutely wild. Okay. He's just going to say, let's bring in Solo Q. Bring it into here and say, uh, look. I'm, I'm, asking, I'm hoping for some Teemo. Okay. Teemo top lane. Only into Camille. You you could unironically see a Teemo if someone blind picks Camille. That, I think, is the only matchup that is acceptable in competitive League of Legends or your inting. But yeah. I've just given you an angle, so you've got some hope. Okay, well, me, Kitty, Talon, you me Tom Kench, please. Okay. Yeah, Tom Kench is definitely going to be in the draft. I can, I can smell it. Oh, I'm pretty oh, sure okay. Tom Kench is going to be there. Okay, bit of Tom. What do you reckon they're going to like pull out for support? Support, um, probably just the usual uh, melee support, maybe. But it's definitely going to be Tom Kench top because Trom is quite an avid Tom Kench player. So I'm excited to see that in LCO. Kitty, is there anything the that's Tom like support? super cheese? Um, I haven't actually seen Tom Kench support in a while, so who plays it, right? I'm not, does he play it? Yeah, I, I mean, I, there was it was a French <laughs> league where I think it was Senna Tom Kench or Senna Gallio. It's definitely still, I think, I think it's possible. I'm not saying 100%, but it's mm. viable. And um, re responding to Mac uh, about the cheese pick, it is cheese, but he'll definitely pull it off because okay. it's spicy and unpredictable, you know. Well, let's see if that one works out. I'd love to see just some kind of crazy team comp. Remember the, the knocked fiddle that we saw as well? <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. I think that was one of the cool ones That's that cursed. Gravitas brought out uh, last year. So not too sure if that'll get through or if it's even... It's not really that strong at the moment, is it? I, heard, I think fiddle is like okay in the meta, but I don't think I've seen him picked at all globally. Yeah, but I, I don't even think he was picked last year globally except for Gravitas. So I, I no, think... Um, Bloody, um, uh, Pabu. Pabu played Pabu, Pabu, played Pabu, 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 right? Pabu, Pabu, yeah, yeah, true, true, true. We have cursed Did he win with that. it at Worlds? MSI. E... MSI. No. Uh... no. <laughs> Up uh... against the world's best, could he do it? Nah. <laughs> but can, but that was it. It was like PGG were like, well, we got to go for something crazy just to throw them off. And then, you know, it didn't, didn't quite work as expected, unfortunately. Um, but MSI, that was a good time. Oh. <laughs> I drank a couple of eggs out of shoes for that. That was, oh, that was fun. I remember. Oh, you did. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I can't believe you still did that. Good protein. Yeah, they're different, aren't you? And then I got, I got lectured by a lot of people from overseas saying, actually, if you eat the eggs cooked, you'll get more protein. And I'm like, bro, it's content, all right? It's not going to be the same as if, if I cook the egg and I put it in a shoe. You, know, you can't drink it then. It's, they didn't get it. It's a culture thing, right? Yeah, it is. It's a culture thing. It's an Australian thing. Yeah. You know what I'd Eggs. like, low key, going back to uh, <laughs> Bex, support. Can we get a singe support like the LCK? Okay. Go on then. That was into Yumi, wasn't it? Yeah. 
And yeah. I'm like, is that, a, is that a soft counter? And she's jumping across, she's like, yoink. Yeah, you, you ground her, right? I think, I think it's the W that like, stops her from dashing onto someone. So if she hops off to auto mm. attack for the shield, you just throw the, the sticky glue at her and she's stuck and you kill her, Yumi. It's really genuinely that simple. I think that's the only strategy. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought think... it was actually funny in the first match of the day when you actually said, this is the Yumi angle. I was like, Rusty doesn't say it's a Yumi angle. It Rusty has never sure. admitted it's a Yumi angle in his <laughs> life. Lost a year on my life when I said it, Mac. I will not lie. <laughs> so there is a quota per year on times that I will say it's a Yumi angle. I think game one <laughs> unironically was, okay. but it hurt. It really hurt. All right. so what are we going to see from the Chiefs? Because Tally was saying they just wanted to pick scaling champs yesterday. They knew they were always in the game as long as they survived. Uh, going into this one, do you think we're going to see something a bit more early game, a bit more engage heavy? Uh, still towards that sort of team fight sort of thing? Like, what are we thinking? I don't know if the Chiefs will... So I have to say, I would love to see Drake yeah. just play Sona and just have fun with it, to be honest. You know, get rid of these tanks. Give me some enchanters. Mm -hmm. Start playing some bangers. You know, you call yourself Diz after Ziz. <laughs> play some hostile beats in the lane. Get the music pumping. I want to see your camera very animated just to match what the uh, the Mammoth cameras are going to be looking like, right? We saw chat popping off for that reason, so... Uh, we're having a rave in the LCO. Very true. What about you, Kitty? Do you think they're going to let Trind through at mid uh, <laughs> into the hairs of Yuri again? Mm, well, like Skimmy said, I think I would like to see Draku pick something along the lines of Sona or Janna. Janna got mm. a rework. Everyone's mm. building Glacial Augment on her. She's getting nerfed next patch, I believe. So please pull it out before it gets nerfed because I really want to see it in competitive and see how it does. Okay. Well, you may get the chance to see it. I guess we're about to find out because I heard the game's ready. It's Chiefs and Mammoth going head-to-head -head right now. Yes, time to jump into this one and see what is the ultimate surprise. What have these teams decided to uh, deliver, I should say, as Mammoth will go for the first pick on Blue. Right yep. at the gates. Going to remove Akali and the Fresh. Yeah, Yumi going to be banned on the other side as well with the Shin Zhao. Uh, it makes sense, again, for anyone who doesn't know Mammoth. Uh, they are new players, so I don't blame you. But a quick rundown of Rocco. Not only is he rocking the most powerful haircut in yes. esports, full stop. He's a Yumi and Braum player. Uh, so you can do the math on what that means uh, with a Yumi being one of the first three bands. Take it off the board. Braum, not as much of a threat in any world on any planet. Uh, so definitely free to pick that one if you would like. <laughs> and Refury is yes. a Vega player. He also made Challenger just quietly skimmy playing Assassin. So while he yeah. is a Vega player, I believe he said yesterday it was his favorite champion. Uh, it's not going to be the thing that he always defaults to. It's like a pocket niche option. Yeah, let's have a look at his, uh, his profile before. Got a, a lot of games on Yone, Yasuo, as well as the Cassidy and 2. So... Uh, this is what always excites me, right? When we when we talk about metas and when we do have this clash of experience versus upcomers, what does it actually look like in the picks and bans? Because one part of you would say, we're just going to blanket ban what is meta. The other part says, no, we're actually going to show respect to these particular picks because these are people that will pilot it better than probably 90% you know, of the server. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> this draft already hurts me if you're a Mammoth fan. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> You know, yesterday, Skimmy, we were talking about the Peace Draft. We yep. saw the Renekton lock in, you're like, that's an AP jungle angle. Mammoth banned 80 junglers. We've seen the Renekton again. Chiefs flex it to mid lane as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just copying the biggest wave of deja vu that I've ever seen right now from the Chiefs on red <laughs> side here. That hurts. We'll see what Mammoth can do to try and answer back, right? They've definitely locked themselves in. Uh, a lot of scaling options, Corky being the most obvious one. Once again, let through, so... I think Mammoth can find some early game solutions, some answers, some avenues to reach that point, like we've seen uh, the champion deliver. But uh, Aphelios, as well as the Lulu, another champion that can certainly look to try and up the ante. But I mean, you're going to be stacked, right? It's, it's all these questions of they look strong, they will be strong. But if Chiefs can draft what they've shown so far, I mean, they're going to blast you before there's even a consideration. Yeah, there's certainly the, the really hard scaling possibility there from the Chiefs' side. But like you mentioned, yeah, there is definite strengths in what Mammoth have built so far as a three-person composition. I feel like Aphelios with Lulu is pretty self-sufficient. They they should just be a scaling lane. Chiefs are the ones obviously now applying the pressure. It's not going to be a drag crew Sona angle, unfortunately, Damn. for Kitty and for yourself who were looking for that one. No Sonas. 
That's uh, going to be the engaged support. So they have the proactivity. They have the first move. It is now a, a Renekton and a Nautilus in lanes for a Diana jungle. So the free setups there for sick wombos. For Mammoth, it's surviving early, getting to those items, getting to those scaling points. Uh, so a lot of their burns will probably be centered towards that, uh, that theory. And that's a really nice AD carry ban to ensure that, right? Get rid of the aggressive Samira choice. Now, I'm wondering where they go next. And they think that yeah. Raze will play, because every angle for Raze is a Draven angle, if memory serves. Oh, I remember Draven at Worlds, uh, and he's actually popping off. Who was there against? It was uh, LNG, I believe, and they're actually... Uh, they were this close. They were this close. Uh, but it didn't work out eventually. Uh, I am wondering if they're going to continue to go down that path of just removing these AD carries, perhaps an Ezreal. Uh, Ezreal is uh, Raze most played in his entire career. Certainly, Chamberlain can be very elusive, could be very annoying if a 1v1 were to happen and both supports went roaming. Um, especially if Rocco needs to try and match that of Dragku. So we'll see what they decide. They go for the Gwen instead, so still valuing that Topoon is an absolute bully in that top lane. Yeah, Topoon definitely is showing, of course, that the, the Renekton is flexible with that Gwen ban, still paying their due respects to the top lane. Uh, yeah. Topoon, with no hesitation, could still easily look towards the Nar right now. Uh, if they really wanted to put the Renekton mid. But the beauty of the Chiefs composition is you expect an AD carry to be picked here, and you expect that fifth pick to be a counter towards a solo lane, because Mammoth have to show both. Uh, yeah. Both their remaining champions right now, including their top lane. So pretty free time here for Chiefs on red side. Pretty scary to see the Chiefs on red side at all. It's a very easy setup, isn't it? This uh, bot lane matchup with the Nautilus and as well as the Jin. So much CC. We've seen it work wonders already. Uh, you just locked in place. I mean, you can look to try and lock in that summit of cleanse, but it's uh, not necessarily getting all the value. There's the Tom Cage. Please lock it in. Surely, there it is. <laughs> Tron the Palm, proficient at this one. We asked, and he's delivered. I'll tell you what, Kitty actually nailed that before he even said anything in the interview. Straight up said, will we see a Tom Cage? There it is. Looking towards his last pick. I feel like Jarvan's... Ooh. Jarvan. I'm going to just stick with junglers while that's a hover because Lulu's already there. That's a jungler that they need to lock in. Uh, physical damage is really the one requirement. Uh, so Talon, right, is going to be the champion of choice. The LPL yes. has been playing some Talon. It does exist. Crazy amount of damage can come out yep. of that champion. A lot of assassination threat now for the likes of Raze and the likes of Arthur on that Diana pre Zonia's album. But I wanted the uh, the Talon and maybe a Yumi, but we're going to get the Talon instead. It is uh, the most played so far uh, for Mayfun, so uh, certainly a champion that he'll be well versed in and can look to try and cause cool some headaches here for Raze. Uh, but the Chief's going to answer back and say, we just have so much damage. Tapoon gets the answer, the fifth and the final pick. He can pick whatever he wants and into that time. Can she says, trend him in. Could be mid. Tally could still play the trend mid. That's the beauty of these True. picks right now is it's so True. flexible for them. Yeah. The Renekton is the setup lane for the Diana gang. So Trindamir is more the sole point of pressure with just Diana hovering in terms of how they're going to influence it. Uh, yep. But their team fighting is obviously going to be quite powerful when they put them both together. If you think back to yesterday's games with Pentanet.gg with this combo, uh, they were just monstering with the amount of damage they put out at the get-go of a team fight, and the rest of it was just clean-up duty. Works really well with a Jin composition. One trap that you can fall into with a Renekton and a Jin is that you don't have damage in your comp overall. You know, there's some damage, but it could scale off and, and resistances could counter you. So yep. the Diana comes in clutch as a soul AP, does an incredible amount of DPS by herself, and Tally provides a high damage split push threat in mid lane. Chief's comp makes yes. a lot of sense. Lots of lots of cohesion there across the board. I'm glad you raised the point about the uh, the flex for Tally in the mid lane, because the last time we actually saw him play this trend to me, it was against the, uh, the Red Cannons, right, at Worlds. That iconic full best of five series to try and advance Ose into the group stage of an international tournament. He finished that one 8, 1 and 10. Absolutely smurfing. New season and another chance to impress once again. Here are your lineups. Mammoth with a lot of their pocket picks. Do they have enough of a bridge to ensure that this Kulki and Filios can give us the damage and that late game policy? Or do the Chiefs have far too many answers? And it is going to be a battle on two different fronts here, it feels like, from the side of Mammoth and Chiefs. Right now, you've got some free scaling down in that bottom lane. The Lulu's going to provide. Corky also wants to be scaling in mid lane. And it's almost similar to last game with, you know, tier building champions or item reliant champions trying to find their way into the game. 20 minutes plus. Not a Rengar top lane. So don't be fooled by the graphic as we are hopping onto the Rift Skibby for game two.
We tell you all, loading into Rift for game number two. It's the Chiefs. They're taking on Mammoth. A big game. David meets Goliath. Two very different rosters. One which has no pro experience. The other, too much. 26 years. Older than some of these players. Crazy amounts of experience. In esports years, they are basically from the Jurassic period. Uh, Chiefs now looking for an invade here. Certainly are. And as we get ready to see what happens in this early game, it's another chance to introduce uh, a fan favorite, you'd have to say. One of the coaches here for the Chiefs, it's Kuden. Mate, how are we? How's that? I have to ask a nice, simple question for you. Uh, the last time Chiefs won a title, uh, it just so happened that Babip and Rays were on that roster. That was Rift Rivals in 2018. So Minions is that the good luck charm? Right. What about this time? Yeah, Rays is uh, the best ADC from O's ever, but he hasn't he hasn't had a good coach since 2016. So th this year, he's this year. He's here and he's got the most aesthetic support as well. A spot line so a good looking thing. bot is all we need. Yep. Fantastic. Well, I know that you're uh, highly spoken and highly regarded in the community. Look, I'm going to leave it at there as we load into this one, prevent missing any first bloods. But uh, I know the fans love you. Is there anything you want to say to them quickly? Uh, no. See, see you guys at MSY. <laughs> I appreciate it as always, good and good luck. Has it had a good coach since 2016 is a strong phrase to say for someone that competed in the NALCS with professional coaching infrastructure. But we'll see what our Lord and Savior of Oceania, Kuden, can provide to the man. <laughs> Especially the best ADC of all time from Oceania with the likes of Lost and King running around in other regions themselves. But nevertheless, we're into this game. Two minutes and 20 seconds in, and you would expect a bit of casual farming. It does seem like after that first little look in by Chiefs, it was really just to get a ward down at the Raptor camp, uh, which is your pretty standard play for seeing where a red start or red side start jungler is going to go next. Uh, so they'll know from probably from this point that it is a level three red side moving towards a full clear uh, just for the talent. Where Arthur on the other side, you know, that, that cerebral jungler that gave them a gold lead skimmy even when they were losing in kills uh, is going to be playing on the opposite side of the map. Certainly is. And it's going to be interesting to keep tabs on those two particular champions. Here's one of them this time, Kench. As well as that tell on as to where they go, what they can achieve. And if they can try and hit those break points nice and early on to try and drive some early momentum, cause Chiefs a few headaches. Find themselves the opportunity to come into this game with a bang. Very early rotate here from Tapoon. He's pushed a wave in under no pressure whatsoever. There's no vision. Reef Fury in trouble. He could just flash forward. This in slice and dice with the stun. And, well, that is first blood for the Chiefs. It's really unfair, man. That's just rude. He just gets a free lane in top lane, pushes it in, just casually walks mid lane, and they get a kill. I mean, what do you even do if you're Reef Fury? You could try and flash your way out in that situation. You'd have to be really fast on the trigger, though, with reactions. Topoon has literally won the game. Skimmy, we're three minutes, 45 seconds into the game, and Topoon's just ended two people's careers. It's illegal. It is illegal. How can he be so Rufio good at this is farming game? with W. Oh. Very hard for me to become speechless, given that I have a, a job of just talking a lot, but you look at that and you wince. It's painful to say it four minutes in. You've got this pocket pick talon. You don't have a blue buff. He's rotated mid and, and found the first blood. The top. The Renekton dream. Topman's a freak of a good kind if you're on his team. Of the worst possible kind if you're his opponent. That's Topman in a nutshell. He's an absolute demon. Oh, it's going to be a big split on Summoner's Rift for top laners that are against him. Just let that sink in for a second. Uh, well, another news. Uh, let's look elsewhere in the map and sort of see how things are doing as the, uh, the Valkyrie once again has to be utilized for that CS. Uh, bot lane seems to be ahead right now. Voice and Rocco doing what they can. They've shoved him away, but Draco is in the area because there is vision. So they've delayed Rocco at least. Won't be synced up resets. Yeah, that was good from Rocco though because he does still back away accordingly as long as he doesn't get caught here. So now this is bad from Rocco. Needed to really respect the wave was bouncing, and he has no choice but to stay. 
Uh, he's just lost too much time and he'd lose too much tempo. There's there's a real world where if Rocco backs there, Arthur just comes bottom right and it's a three-on-one dive and it's impossible to play if you are a voice on this affiliate. So this means he's going to be down a reset. Still a Lulu, so it's okay in the end. Uh, really, we have to look towards this top lane matchup and say that it is... 20 CS down against a Renekton that ganks mid, used flash mid, stole a blue buff, and came back top. That is the place that is the most dire so far. And looking back to yesterday's games, that is starting to find a point of consistency for us. It really is. And I suppose if we circle the question back to what Mac mentioned before, right? Who's the focus? Who's the carry? I mean, they have all been carries in their own right. Uh, we have seen three of these members from top mid and bot work on a roster before and that was of championship caliber but it feels already like we've got a very different opinion of how they want to play things out no longer is tally the substitute mid laner playing to facilitate no he is the carry you could also argue that Raze is the carry but Tapuna's is playing renekton which is going to have all that early game carry potential too it always blows my mind right when you have this many carries but it works yeah i mean it's about the type of carries though skimmy right it's not just a bunch of mechanics max 16 year olds running around on summoners rift they are experienced players multiple role players as well as multiple years different influences and metas that they have been resilient through so they've all kind of done the hard yards understood what it means to be a weak side titan in league of legends and so it's not just a case of having a bunch of carries and it's not too many cooks in the kitchen in, in that respect it's actually just a super team it certainly is all the hype surrounding them but i suppose now you gotta hope that you can believe in that hype we've seen certain teams like this happen in the past believe the hype or uh, all that early momentum soon to be discovered as the late game weeks come on through we've had time and time again the whole uh, story of all the playoff buff where we see more situations like that take place of all these other strong strong contenders for the title so right now it feels like we haven't seen arthur in the game at all skimmy like, just looking, thinking about it now, he's just been an invisible jungler, but he has hit level 6. So it's kind of the one thing that a, a Diana wants at all costs. You know, you want to lose as little as possible, hit that ultimate, and then that breakpoint for your ganking is insane. You saw the wave top potentially building to be a crash under Topoon's turret just a minute ago, so it depends on how they choose to play this one out. You can see the sweeper used in tri bush and control ward placed by Topoon. Tron the Pom has to face check this bush. He has no choice. If he wants to stay in this lane, he has to walk into that bush. His other option is leave lane. But I think they've found a kind god in Topoon this time around who's not going to let Arthur waste time. He certainly isn't. Arthur is, as you can see here. Going to go for the Herald. Uh, that was a bit of an obscure fact I saw going around the Twitter sphere about itemization the other day. He's talking about why go for the Hextech Alternator in the build path towards a rocket belt when you can get actual more raw AP in this avenue instead. Min max decision making, but we see it here today. Will it be the difference for a team fight that is soon to break out? Herald down to 1k, close to smite range. Arthur disengage away. Flashing two, smite secure. Can he pick it up? Can they pick it up? They've lost members already. It's a one-for-one one so far. Support for jungle. Tally looking to try and jump in. Popping that Undying Rage at the very last moment. Looking to try and find that execute with Crit. Really ramping up here, but he can't find the kill. He can't tap the Q and he can't get the health back. Won't burn the flash, but he utilized the ghost. Will the rest of the Bruiser Boy duo be enough? Oh, Beta breath there. As a hook went wide, a flash had to be burnt to respect it. Yeah, I mean, that was actually really well played by Reef Fury as the fight fizzles out, right? Has his flash still at the very end of that one, still in the middle of everybody just putting damage out. That was a package as well coming out of that Corky. You can see the AD carry is not involved. They're just having a pretty casual 1v1 down here. But at the end of the day, that was Mammoth holding their own against Chiefs in a skirmish. And it's the first real skirmish that we've seen. It was a good package, right? Because it dodges out on the hook. Rocco just gets jumped on by all of the Bruiser Boys. The cost is high where Arthur still goes down as a trade, but he does get the smite on the Herald. So you'll see Topoon in the middle of the fight will just casually list to the right. He's able to pick that one up. Tally gets stunned by the Tarm Kench, so he actually loses all usefulness with that ultimate being popped at the same time. And Refuer is able to get into the mix, and a nice flash at the very end saves his bacon, but... And even trade overall, you would say, except that the Herald is in hand and still Chiefs in control of the map. So much more to play for. Yes, 10 minutes in. Breaking point is to be found of a 2k lead mid top, seeming to be 
the area of prime focus. And for good reason too, that's where we've seen the majority of the action so far in this game. Question will now be though, what will Tapoon decide to do with this Herald? He's asked for Arthur to rock up to this lane. The fixed skin is there, the shield has been consumed, but you can't mitigate that much. So much burst and so much damage. And surely now a top tier one soon to fall on down. The rest of Mammoth. We're gonna try and answer back here. Being rather aggressive just to give Mayfan an invite into the jungle, but the rest of Mammoth for Logan are all put the pressure bot side. It was a really early summon on that Herald, so this is going to be a, a fairly inefficient turret take in the end. Uh, it will still go down with this wave, so it's not a huge deal. It just runs a risk of perhaps being a little bit slower and perhaps missing out on a second charge, but they should be okay. The trades on the other side, yeah, look, it's a dragon at best right now. Uh, and there's, you can see from the posturing of Chiefs the possibility of a contest. I don't think it's something that they want to go all in for unless Mammoth missed position, but it basically confirms that the Drake is being done. It confirms that a second charge can go off in top lane skimming. Wow. And it confirms that a top lane in a turret will fall at 11 minutes as well. Which is what, another 650 in the pockets of Topoon and Arthur? Like they need it? We've seen this before though. This is the exact play that happened yesterday. The fact that they took zero kills, weren't interested in skirmishes at all. They just played for lane dominance. Topoon got two turrets and from that point on, Macro was the name of the game. It was so hard to recover from that point. And I suppose the point you're looking at for Mammoth here was invest everything towards bot side, ensure that Mayfan can invade, that they can get that vision that the Constellation Prize is this dragon, but Chiefs just don't care. Yeah, I mean, as long as they're making money, that's what matters the most, right? And you could make the conversation on teleport difference for bot lane and what that means, but Chiefs are saying we're still playing towards the teleport lane anyway. You know, no one's up here to help will win the 2v2. Supreme confidence from them so far. You've got Tally with a really good matchup in mid as well. And you're starting to see those movements from the Hex Gates. I think this is our first Hex Tech Soul yeah. in the LCO. So you'll now see some mobility from those Hex Gates. May fun about to walk into potential death. Careful. Oh no. He's been absolutely played there by the safety of what could have been Vision. Hex Flash comes across and as he jumps across the wall, he's met by a depth charge. Yeah, just gets put to sleep and unfortunately we talk about it, we've cursed him. The Hex Gate spotted on a ward. He goes to have a look at the Krug camps and a Hex Flash gonna secure that one. More played by the Chiefs. Top lane, the lead that they have up there has transitioned into item purchases in the jungle. That now comes down towards bottom lane. And you can see that really left reeling is Mammoth always one step behind the punch, Skimmy, and 6,000 odd gold and growing at a rapid pace. Very scary situation to find yourself in. So accelerated so early on, 13 minutes in. And, uh, well, when that Unleashed Teleport comes about, no space on this map will be safe. As the Conan Call comes out, just to make Refury's uh, life a little bit harder to try and see us under this turret as that wave crashes in. Another wave in mid also doing the exact same. Sapoon already popping that Dominus nice and early. Looking to try and slice on dice in. A flash away from Voice has the red and white, but it's not enough when you're just far behind. Burning both summoners, but not burning anyone down. Arthur just going to have a little skirmish there with Refury and Mayfun, but he's able to walk his way out, no issues at all. Tron the Pom also was about five seconds off having the flash, I think, on that Tom Kench during the skirmish. Not going to be able to use the ultimate and actually save his AD carry in voice. Voice, unfortunately, is not in a position where he can sit at a mid lane out of turret by himself and feel safe. It is no longer a safe space for him. Mammoth, I think, a quick lapse of judgment. The Lulu goes to place wards with their jungler, which is your standard mode of operating in competitive league, right? Jungler supports move together, but your AD carry has to be safe. It certainly does. Just uh, enveloped in the idea that Tapoon is soon to eclipse double the gold of this time, Kench. Uh, a very scary situation to find yourself in, but it's much to our point at the top of show, right? I want to see some more early game aggression, and this is exactly it. You can see a lot of people now moving towards bottom lane. Tron the Palm going to be here to make sure there is no skirmish, and I believe that's also a map flip from the side of Mammoth. Uh, looking at the Herald that is being up and available, Tron the Palm. No teleport, but really no choice. I don't think you can put Refury against Tally now that the Gale Force is completed, and you've got a uh, Mana Mune without being fully stacked to Muramana. Yep. You're just not a, a comparative champion to a Trindamir. I don't know if you can actually 
willingly fight this Herald if Chiefs are all on the map. I'm not sure that's a realistic possibility. We'll see what they choose to do, however. Oh, here comes the Poon, saying you're being greedy for it. Unleashed uh, portal is available as the TP comes on through. And up rocks the TK. But he's realized I'm surrounded by far too many members. Out comes the Devour. Bear in mind, this is not 12.2, so there isn't an extra boost of movement speed just yet. So he is still lagging behind and falling on down. Can Ray survive? He cannot. It's a Constellation Price. And that is a huge shutdown. A double kill fan hit from Drag Coop. It's the Chiefs sort of the same. Not ideal for who it goes to, but they won't mind. They're the hunting for the ace. Is. They are hunting for that ace, and there it is. Yeah, meanwhile, at the Rift Herald, Arthur has just cleaned up with Tally. Uh, any surviving members, members were just considered flanked. Chiefs come in, they'll basically get the ace. They'll get the Rift Herald as well. We'll see the remnants of this one as Arthur is the one who kicks it off. It's Voice in Rocco. It's an Aphelios and a Ooh. Lulu. Or it was an Aphelios before he just got literally one hit. And those are two skirmishing champions that we saw yesterday. You know that Chiefs have been scrimming pensinet.gg just from the draft alone. Yeah. Terrifying skirmishing. Look at Dragoose Nautilus low-key though, doing more damage than the bot lane of Mammoth combined. <laughs> In the fight or total? Just in that comparison there, yeah, I mean, his, his Nautilus just does a little bit more damage. I wonder why that is. He can just lift more, man. True. Gains IRL. Lift more on the rift. Must be a PB. One rep. <laughs> Good reference, give me I'll pay that. <laughs> Let's see what happens in this bot lane as uh, we return to the action. Ron upon escorting as well as protecting his jungler here. But they will have to sacrifice a fair bit for this. That's the first Hextech Drake taken on down. A little bit of extra uh, damage for them to talk about. A bit of the haste and bonus attack speed. But what we're all really excited for is that Hextech Dragon Soul. The chain lightning effect stacking on through. Big damage to come on through as a result. And will we get any creative Hextech gate utilization this game? So... Well, I don't know if we're going to use the package here. We'll hold our thought just perhaps because he was posturing for it. There was three top side. The Hex Gates, I think, have not been utilized to the level that they could potentially be. And I think Simple Vision is obviously the, the biggest counter for that, right? Impossible to place good vision if you're in a losing situation. But for example, the one right there, that is Tron's at risk of being though, provides sick flank angles if Chiefs are pushing the bot lane inhibitor turret. There's a teleport. Say about a flank, and there is one, and that's a package that says, uh, I'm joining my team. Not much more than that, very defensive. Is that just a teleport for efficient package usage? Because that's respectable. I tell you what, that's Oz Post. I want that guy delivering my parcels because I'm always home, but I always seem to miss them. Anyway, let's go for this team <laughs> fight here. Tally jumps them through, instantly exhausted. Out comes the Undying Rage, has a ghost active and a flash, but he's all in. He commits, but he falls on down. It's Corky that picks it up. Nice for the cool key. A big shot down. And a chance to work towards this Ludens. Yeah, Tally having a little bit of a laugh there with that dive. Had flash in hand, uh, but Gale forces forwards, ghost into the mix. And if you're against a Lulu that has exhaust up, it is pretty difficult to be a Trindomir into that many people. Uh, it's not going to be as simple as crit the carry, kill the carry, and get out if you can. So he does go down and... You're right, that's nice gold. It realistically goes into the hands of the correct person, the one person that needs the money as well. Uh, in the corky, the scaling choice for them. Still an impossible situation for them, 11,000 down, 19 minutes in, Skibby. But hey, they are getting the money where they need it. Certainly are. Will we be on par to uh, get a new personal best on the quickest game today? I believe we had a, a 23 minute victory already. Will it be a case of securing the Baron and ending it off there? Or will the Chiefs go for the safe style and the uh, the guaranteed victory, to say the least? We have to find what their route is here as they are prepping waves. They are clenching the map in their control. And uh, all the vision is pushed up very far. Sieging this inner turret, definitely possible that Mammoth will look for a fight. You can see Mayfun sitting on a flank looking, playing with his own vision. Uh, but again, you've got the Hex Flash from Nautilus. You've got the pressure that you're seeing now in top lane as well. 
Chiefs with all of the tools that they would like if they're looking for perhaps that counter play, looking for the engage themselves. A dive, realistically very possible with the Nautilus, Renekton, and Diana combo. And Jin can kind of just sit super far back, use the curtain call, and if Talon goes towards the Jin, so be it. He's not in the fight, right? They're both doing the same job. <laughs> a bit of emote spam, why not? You're just waiting for a wave, you can't step up. You have no idea where they are. Control wood blocks at all the vision on the left hand side. And Arthur's ready. Ready and waiting to take this Baron. Brings the rest of his team with him. They might just look the two man this as the rest of Chiefs play bodyguards. Staunching out their opponents. And by the Tapoon, or by the time I should say Tapoon rocks up here, it's a guarantee. Yeah, Blue Trinket spots it at what, 3,000 health. No time for Mammoth to get in there. No safety net for them to even walk in regardless. You think that face-checking Topoon even by himself, you're still face-checking a two-item Renekton that is so far ahead the game state, ahead of the game state, that he is absolutely terrifying to deal with. Mammoth's best response is to try and get probably just vision towards the dragon, but if they play to the dragon, they're going to lose an inhibitor. Tally is just an unstoppable pressure point of his own right. More than one person has to deal with him. I don't think Tron can fight him one-on-one. -on -one. Free Fury Ooh. definitely cannot fight him one-on-one. -on -one. They even bring a Lulu for good measure just to see if they can find him. But no, no, they can't. But well, the Chiefs are just dancing right now on this map. Come top side, 1v3. Oh, wait, deal with mid instead. And if you can't beat us mid, then just look towards bot side and you got a very angry crocodile that snowballed out of control very early on. Draco said enough. It won't be Leona, but this result will, in fact, be far better. They took the wild growth from Rocco. Wasn't taking Ooh. any chance of that one. And Arthur okay. goes in for the two man moonfall. Oh, they just stepped out of range. And that's a nice little stasis. Bates out, what could have been a Moonlight Vigil to take him on down? Is he going to be able to try and survive in this situation? No. Falls on down. It is cool going to pick up that kill once again. What can the Chiefs do to try and close out this game? But more importantly, what can Mammoth do to prevent their base from falling on down? One hip's already gone. Minions are pushing a top side as well. Three down, bot two. Minions are acting as that sixth member here for the Chiefs. And they'll say a one for one, that's enough for us. Yeah, it's also going to be turrets broken, the mid lane inhibitor gone. Dragku stops to hit the hex gate just real quick there, had to be a misclick, uh, and then continues to disengage and throws his hook to safety. That Corky, unfortunately, I think Refury saw a montage moment and he got one hit instantly, uh, and the montage was dead as soon as it started. You'd normally look at these situations and you'd say they are so far down Mammoth that you probably take the one for one. You probably take the mid lane inhibitor being killed as long as Chiefs don't get a shot at all three of them, because that's when it becomes impossible to hold. Uh, and the mid lane inhibitor is, in theory, the easiest inhib to hold. In saying that, if the Chiefs roster just shows up in mid lane with those supers, what do you do? I think Arthur just very far forwards, doesn't have Popoon ready, doesn't have Tally ready. It's hard to critique a team that is this far ahead because they are just limit testing a little bit. Every opportunity for an engage is probably a montage moment for each individual on the Chiefs. Tally had his chance. Arthur's now had a crack at it. I would say Topoon's next in line to try and go for that montage moment, but they're still coming out ahead, so it doesn't matter. That's the crazy part, right? Despite them searching for that play of the day, there's no real risk uh, associated with it. It looks fancy, it looks funny. The game is still firmly in their control. Soon to be a 20k gold lead. As they will destroy, dismantle this base. Talis is free-handedly taking this uh, top and hip. That's two down now. The rest of the team with no Baron buff doesn't really matter at this stage. We'll open up that third and final one. The hook, nice flash away. It's gonna fall on down all the same. And tutorial style gameplay. Seems to be the aim of this game. What can Mammoth do in a last ditch effort? It's tutorial victories and an impatient Arthur. Just keep your eyes on this Dieter because he is looking. He's absolutely hunting for the engage angles. One good engage. Here we go. 
Drag Q jumps in, hits the depth charge straight onto the Eddie carry. What can they do to try and follow things up from that one? Cold Meat goes out nice and early. Rage finds that first kill. They take out the time Kench. Undying Rage once again, cycling out, getting the health back and not needing to burn the flash. Working away onto the Nexus itself from putting in a little bit of damage, tickling those turrets, but more so waiting for these next minion waves to come on through. They need those empowered supers. That's what they're waiting for. And that's what they're not finding. A big one connects and they lose their support. They lose to Poon too. The voice will fall on down for it. He got the shutdown goal, but he can't utilize oh. it for 40 seconds. And Raze is completely untouched. Refury trying to do this by himself. Tally no ultimate means that the Trindomir can't get involved, but just not enough gas in the tank, you wouldn't say, for the mid laner of Mammoth. Here come the supers. There's the delayed ace. You're respawning. It does not matter. In come the game win conditions. Uh, 26 minutes. Chiefs go 2 0. Tally with a cheeky stat pad at the end there, and yeah, very easy 26 minute victory for them in the end. It didn't at any moment feel like there was even a, a glimpse of hope for Mammoth. That was a really hard game to lose because uh, there just wasn't a win condition. Top Hood straight up put the foot down. What was it, three minutes and 40 seconds into that one? Yeah. He wasn't messing around. He was not there to lose. He was not there to go quietly. He absolutely slaughtered them early. And that's the last thing that you want to do against the Chiefs, right? We'll always say this yeah. with, a, with a lower place team against one of the best is you want to start with a bang. You want to actually start with a lead. And then the better teams usually try and claw that back. Yeah. This time the Chiefs just smash them early. And above all else, uh, Rusty, I mean, it just feels like the perfect homecoming here for Rays. He spent three years on the Chiefs already, starting back in 2016. He's had his fun overseas. He's returned back to this roster, and week one could not have gone better. A 2-0 on the week, and Mac has to feel good for a team so highly hyped. Yeah, you, you have to be happy for Chiefs, you know? Like, even from the get-go, from that interview, they were saying they were coming for everyone, and it certainly looked like that with Tapoon, but only snatching that kill in mid. I, I don't think I've ever seen someone so easily just walk up and cue a blue buff and then have full... He's, he's just won the game. But then, at like the 11-minute mark, the double turret from the Herald was ridiculous. There was just so much going on in that top lane, and Tapoon was definitely a key for victory. Uh, but shout-outs to the carry support this game. Of course, Dragku, I think he was like... 405, maybe even more towards the end of that game. So he was doing a whole lot of work, or at least snatching those kills, as well as uh, providing the tankiness and the CC that set Chiefs up for success. So everything, everything just really going in favor of the Chiefs. Although, that being said, I did really like seeing what MEC was bringing towards the end. They, they really tried to defend that base. You know, there was a couple of kills going their way. They were getting some damage off. But of course, like you're looking at the gold diff, it's almost hitting like, it, it is 15K. It's getting even worse as like the game goes on. There's just so much difference. Uh, down in that bot lane as well, Voice, I think he had some, some runes that needed him to have a whole lot more influence in the game to really have the effect that he wanted as well. So uh, not too uh, great of a game down in the bot lane there for Voice, so pretty unfortunate. But, look, let's talk about the champions. Let's talk about Chiefs doing such a good job. 17k gold diff at the end, uh, and we didn't get to see the Arcane Salt, but or the Hextech Salt, rather, but it was it was almost there. It was almost there, Rusty. It was a perfect game, objectively speaking, right? If we take kills out of the equation, Mammoth got nothing. They got yeah. seven kills in total through that game, and it just started so early, so aggressively, and it's just, it's clean, it's easy from the side of the Chiefs. Just makes you more excited to see Pensanet.gg if they continue their same form, what they will look like when they go up against the Chiefs, because we call them a super team for a reason, Mac. Lots yeah, of potential there. It's one of those things as well. We spoke about Chiefs, like their macro decisions yesterday to keep themselves in the game. They had 11 turrets to zero in that game. So just playing the macro game like ridiculously well and just keeping themselves in the lead. Now, uh, I, I feel like we got to see some glimpses of hope. You know, Refury on the Corky had a couple things going on towards that sort of like 10 minute mark where they mm -hmm. went for the fight near the Herald. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't go as planned. Like they were keeping up, they were keeping up, but Tapoon had already done that damage at the three minute 40 mark. So there's just like that gap. There's that slight gap. And this man, he's so damn good at the game that the gap just keeps on getting bigger skin. It does. I mean, we were looking at his stats yesterday when he went up against the Powerhouse and Biopanther, and as uh, Rusty quite rightly pointed out, they were the best for very different reasons. And it is 
simply the fact that he is a bully in that top lane. He knows the matchups, he will extrapolate every kind of win con he can find. And he's not going to be sitting there and crying about the fact that TP can't be util uh, you know, utilized to try and salvage some form of hope by going down bot. Yeah. I'm going to bully you, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to take you down with or without a jungler. And that's a crazy fact, right? And I think you look at that game and go, um, the Chiefs were having a lot of fun with it, a lot of montage hunting. Yes, you can make the question and say, uh, we want a, que uh, a clean clean game. You know, we want it to be 20 minutes, done, out, move on to the next one. But why not? I mean, these games aren't going to happen all the time. So why not just uh, see if we can try and get that cheeky pentakill nice and early. Yeah, shove and roam, baby, shove and roam. Now, Kitty, let's bring you back into the conversation. I heard you got a winner down on the sidelines. Yeah, I grabbed the Nautilus from that game, Draku. So let's get into it. Hello, Draku. What's up? So um, you had an almost clean death, uh, uh, I mean clean game, sorry, with one death at the very end of the game. You also had four kills, which was the most kills in the game. Was it a kill steal or a kill secure? Um, nah, I'm just getting the job done. I don't know, the kills just came to me and um, I, know, I think I'm replacing Ray soon as an ADC. But um, yeah, the kills just came to me. I mean, you're definitely the carry in the ball in for that game. But let's talk about something else. So your uh, your team is getting labeled as the super team of the split. Uh, what kind of uh, pressure does that put on you guys for in terms of expectations? How are you going to meet those expectations? Well, I guess it's I, don't know, I guess it's a lot of pressure trying to meet expectations. But um, like you know, we're just like I, I don't care what we're like labeled as. We're just going to work on ourselves and. Um, you know, perfect the macro game as you could see that game. Like, no matter what team, we're just going to play our own game, and um, yeah, we're just going to close out games cleanly or we'll try to, unlike yesterday. Um, and yeah, today was a better showing despite, you know, first thing Mammoth. I mean, you guys have huge potential, especially with the three returning players. So I'm excited to see more from the Chiefs, and thank you for joining in the interview, and see you soon. Thank you. See ya. Always good to see that aesthetic man with the <laughs> biceps in the interview. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't give us the flex he that was he's known for. He was very reserved, wasn't he, Kitty? He was, he was keeping it calm, maybe locking it for another day. Got to gotta keep it calm for now, man. <laughs> yeah, still early days, still early days. He's got a whole whole split ahead of him to try to get that energy revamped. Now, uh, not going to be keeping this one any longer, of course. You saw him on your screen. He was also the player of the game. Dragku coming in clutch with the stats doing work there in the bot lane. 4-1-9 and nine in the end. 68% kill participation. Man was just running all across the map. That's what he did last year, and I dare say we're going to see him doing the exact same thing again this year. 25 wards placed as well, so really just playing his role nicely. Now, Kitty, uh, is that a good amount of wards, and do you usually place more wards than him still? Well, 25 control... Oh, 25 wards placed. Sorry, I read that wrong. That is a lot of wards for such a short game, so, mm. you know... Great, so, uh, great things there. And um, the four kills, obviously, Draku, the king of bot lane for that game. Sub gap, if I say so myself. <laughs> and look, we have another resident support here in Rusty. Uh, sub gap, what do you reckon? I was going to say, two of those kills of the four were actually last hits with his ultimate. So you can't mm. really blame him for that one, right? They're inevitable. Like, it is going to find it. It's, it's his team's fault for not securing it faster, damn it. But no, he did, he did really well in that game. Look, just, you, you got to secure it, even if it does go to the support, right? Now, uh, other people that have secured the bag, secured the goods, are you guys at home? Because we've got more OP.GG reviews that you guys have sent in for from the fans. So, who is it? It's Steve. Big Steve. All right. So, Rusty, tell me, uh, what's going on here? What do these numbers mean? me. <laughs> oh, it is it yours? Is it yours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's uh, it's my off-roll account that I went like zero. I think I went like zero six for my first six placement games. I got put in gold, and then had to try and climb my way back up. But let's just say off-roll's not going well. In saying that, that last game, can I just say that Zed was the most tilted I've ever seen a human, and we won that one. So mentally, we've bounced back to 110. We're ready for <laughs> ready for challenger. No, very very cool. Why now, is uh, it Skimmy, anything yes. to say on this one, on this performance of the anonymous person? Look at the control wards, bro. Look at those. <laughs> in that Zach game. Why 14 in the Zach game? You just... 
that's what I'm going to say, right? 14 wards and he lost. So fake news, eh? Darren Tyrus, continue playing on in silver there, mate. Yeah, continue <laughs> playing in silver, mate. Yeah, right. So just <laughs> you heard him. Shredding up Dar and he's not even, <laughs> even part of this conversation. <laughs> oh, all right, Kitty, any pointers for this anonymous individual? I'm just staring at the Glacial Zach support with the Zonias. Yeah, thoughts? You got Ace, so it's probably just a team diff, but... Gotta gotta show us the Zach support sometime, man. Gotta teach us how to play it. I gotta climb first, Kitty. Give me give me a bit. No motivations yet, but I'll show it. The second I queue against you, I will play it. I promise. It's just you just roam and launch in, surely. Now we do have one more to have a quick look at as well. Uh, this could be another one of Rusty's random accounts. It could also be a melt. So, uh, Skimmy, you want to take me through this one? Oh, Big Melg, so who's uh, jumped off the off-season, said, you know what, support in the bin. Now, I'm going to be playing some carries. He's had enough of carrying his teammates. He wants to be the star of the show. I'm not seeing too many victories here. It's a bit of a shame there. Uh, but you know what? You miss every punch you don't take, right? You look at some of these golden KDAs, and you're thinking, that's looking pretty juicy. Three games, three dubs on the Akshan. When are we going to get that in the LCR? Respect you, Melg. Love your work, mate. One day, one day it'll come in. Now, Kitty, anything to say about this one? Man's getting a couple of aces, even though he's copping the L's. All I'm going to say, if you're getting aces in all your losses, it's most likely just a team gap and you're in loser's queue. So may, may God be with you, but you, you need better <laughs> luck. You need better luck to win. Hopefully, hopefully uh, it'll all work out. Either way, he's in loser's queue, but he's still in masters. So, you know, you can't complain too much about that. You know, some people could just dream of one day being in masters. Don't know if it's ever going to happen. Uh, never been there. Skimmy, that, that's your dream, right? Uh, well, it was not TFT. I hit that. So uh, oh. there you go. That's a whole different game altogether because I am so bad at League that I uh, relegate myself to a completely different mode. Look, ARAM is fun. And for it fun, is. gaming is the best way to game. And, you know, you heard it here first. You've probably heard it before because it's true. If you're not having fun, what are you doing? Now, to have fun on Twitch, you've got to be following. So hit that follow button for the LCO Twitch so you know when we're live so you don't miss all the action, all the fun, all the goodness, Kitty's interviews, all the big games, all the players doing crazy stuff, and of course, Kuden's interviews. And you're not going to know they're live unless you follow us here on Twitch. So make sure you do that. But, of course, we do have a third game to get to, so I'm not going to keep you guys any longer listening to me carrying on. We've got to hop into game three. Kanga up against Direwolves. Who's going to be taking the cake in the third game of the day? Find out after this. TK. But he's realised I'm surrounded by far too many members. Out comes the Devour. Bear in mind, this is not 12.2, so there isn't an extra boost of movement speed just yet. So he is still lagging behind and falling on down. Can Ray survive? He cannot. It's a Constellation Prize. And that is a huge shutdown. Trust They're hunting for the speed. ace. They are hunting for that. Get involved, but just not enough gas in the tank, you wouldn't say, for the mid laner of Mammoth. Here come the supers. There's the delayed ace. You're respawning. It does not matter. But I want you. Oh, I want you. 